Hi there and welcome to Capital View. The Patel agitation for reservation in Gujarat has once again reignited the debate on caste quotas. What impact will this reservation agitation in Gujarat have in the rest of India? Joining us on that question, Jainaran Vyas of the Gujarat BJP, Akar Patel, senior columnist and author, and Chandrabhan Prasad, author, journalist, and someone also who belongs to the Dalit Bahujan Samaj. Thanks everyone very much indeed for being here. Mr. Jainaran Vyas, would you concede that the reservation agitation spearheaded by the 22-year-old Hardik Patel is one of the biggest challenges to the BJP government since you came to power in 1995? Well, I think any agitation has its own challenges. Uh, so whether it is big or small, uh, definitely an agitation uh, going on in the state is a problem for any state government. But you know, the Patels are 15% of the population. They're a dominant community. They are solid BJP voters. If the Patels now turn against you because of the kind of police action that we've seen, the kind of clampdown we've seen, nine people have died. One Patel youth, Shwetang Patel, has died a custodial death. If they turn against you, is that not a big challenge for you there in Gujarat? Well, I think in the first instance, I will not go to that extreme hazarding a guess that they will turn against the Bharti Janata Party. Uh, second, uh, Sagarika, we have to look a little beyond this uh, whole uh, uh, agitation or conflict which appears on surface to be a kind of a caste-based conflict. In fact, this has far more greater ramifications as far as the economic development and the income and wealth distribution as well as the as well as the employment opportunities over last decade in this country are concerned i think uh, sooner or later we will have major problems on account of the diminishing employment opportunities and also the diminishing returns from agriculture so you're conceding so, so you're conceding that gujarat has failed to provide employment to large numbers of Patel youth, uh, that in fact the Gujarat why, model why, has not succeeded for the common Gujarati. Why you want to limit it to Gujarat? You know, the, if you look at the employability in la index, over last few years, I would say decade, it has gone down from what it was point around point 0.4 to 0 0.02. That means we are already as a nation in the era of jobless growth. That Akar Patel, you have also been country. writing that this is not about caste mobilization, it's about educational deprivation and the fact that Patels are unable to compete for white collar jobs. Is that what it is or is it also a battle for political power? Both, but let's look at the first point first. Can we conceive of such a demonstration in Bombay or Delhi or Chennai or Bangalore or, or in Hyderabad? Why is it happening in um, Ahmedabad? Why is it happening in Surat? Ahmedabad is the fourth biggest city in this country. Surat is the eighth biggest city in this country. The reason is there is social mobility in Bombay and Delhi and Hyderabad and Chennai and in Bangalore. There is no social mobility in um, Ahmedabad. There is no social mobility in Surat. The, the family of the poor and the children have no access to English. Government schools are uh, forbidden from teaching English to the children of the poor till class 5. There is no ABCD till class 5 when a child is 10. Very few Gujaratis speak the language. There is no Accenture, Infosys, Wipro, TCS a presence in any strong measure in any of the cities of uh, Gujarat. So the, the, uh, the ability of the lower middle class or the poor to uh, transition into the middle class through services jobs is absent in that state. There are many good things to be said about the Gujarat model and that model is based on the manufacturing. It, may, it uh, helps uh, create blue collar jobs. It's not very good with the white collar jobs. Service, it is the only state in India, the only major state in India whose GDP is, is dominated by manufacturing over services. There is no other major state of India quite like uh, Gujarat. Uh, now, as someone who is part of the Dalit community who has been writing in favor of reservations for Dalits, how is the Patidar demand for reservation different from the Dalit demand? Is this, as you were telling me earlier, more of a seizing of power rather than an attempt to argue for affirmative action because we are weak? Because the Patels can't argue that they are weak. Uh, Dalits have argued their case of reservation because uh, on the ground that we have been discriminated in the, in the, in the, in the, in the past and mm -hmm. also in, the, uh, in present. And therefore, we need this, uh, 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 this opportunity. Right. Patels are not saying that. 
Mm-hmm. Patels are saying that we dominate everything. In fact, the leader said that we have some 150 or some, some MPs in parliament. We dominate everything, but not the bureaucracy. A. We dominate everything except the bureaucracy. Uh, not the bureaucracy. Uh, 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 this is a very, very special case because here is, here is a situation where a community is saying we will seize reservation because we are powerful. But I just want to uh, just also uh, bring your attention to the fact that, you know, since Hardik Patel was speaking in Hindi, he's now trying to align himself to the North Indian for dominant caste, like the Gujars, like the Jats, uh, like the, in fact, the Kurmis. Do you see this as a kind of a mandal too, where the dominant agrarian castes are now going to clamor for reservation? You are absolutely right. The, here is a situation whereby there is no morals involved. Uh, there is no logic involved. There is no rational involved. The only logic is that we are strong, but because we don't study, we fear examination halls, we fear mm. question papers, and therefore we can't, can't crack we fear IAS. examination halls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, right. I ask my Dalit fellows in Gujarat, how do you confront a, 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 a Patidar youth? He right. says, we, we have pen and we have books. They fear pen more than gun. So now you didn't put your kid in a good school, didn't give the kid English. Now you want the kid into I am Lucknow, I am. Uh, By sheer force of reservation. Yes, because we are powerful. So, uh, Mr. Jainan, we ask respond to that. This is not about unemployment and uh, lack of opportunity. It's basically because you want to get into bureaucracy and IIMs and medical colleges without education. Well, I think, Sagrika, this is such an extreme uh, uh, argument that is hazarded, which is absolutely away from the reality. The fact, again, I, I, I have very high regards for Mr. Akash Patel, but the ma manufacturing dominant uh, economy that he was talking about, I think nobody in this country would talk about manufacturing dominated in the, uh, 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 economy anymore. We are an economy which is almost above 50% or almost 60% comes from the service sector. So manufacturing dominating the economy is, is the better of yesteryears. I just want to read out an Economic Times editorial which bears out what Akar is saying and I want to put it to you Mr. General Anvyas. A few large refineries and ports account for a humongous quantity of investment and raise the state's growth rate without dramatically altering the rate at which the common man's lot improves. Gujarat's agriculture fared well thanks to adoption of new varieties of cotton and bounty of the Narmada. So while Gujarat prospered, the Gujarati did not. As high investment flourished in small enclaves, it had no linkages to the local economy. So big projects led to the state's investment going up, but the common Gujarati did not benefit. I am sorry, which I respectfully defer with these observations. This is an observation made by somebody who is much away from the ground reality. In fact, Gujarat today has a very successful model which is of the cooperative milk uh, uh, societies that mm -hmm. distributes. North Gujarat alone has a milk economy of 22,000 crores. Gujarat's agriculture growth rate is uh, is clicking around 8 to 10 percent. Gujarat is dominant. Then as why is there such a the neglect of education? Concerns. Why so is there such it's, a it's neglect also, of English language there also, education? There, there also, you know, there is a historical reason and Mr. Akash Patel being on his, this show, he will support me. Unfortunately, a controversy is haunting us, which is which is thanks to the Thakur boys. There are two Thakur boys. One said English from eighth, and the other said English from fifth. So it was known as Thakur boy Atmawala, Thakur boy Panchmawala, and this has created some kind of a problem as far as. But then civil services are no more dependent upon the uh, um, uh, 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 English language. You go to the Gujarat countryside. Everybody has a couple of buffaloes. And I can, I, I, I can argue with anybody, buffaloes and ABCD cannot coexist. Mm -hmm. And without English, you are not going to fly a jet. You are not going to get into IMs and you are not going to get into civil services. He says, from Gujarat, from Patel. Why are not Patel able to crack civil services? They can crack anything. They can go to Everest. They can <laughs> make good in sports. They can the go Patel's to Vancouver. They can, they, they can crack Let's USA. Let's get Akar in on that. But, but not the question paper. Why is that? <laughs> Let's get Akar in on that. Akar, why is it that Patels can't crack the UPSC question paper? Having 
uh, performed really poorly um, academically my entire life. I am on the side of uh, Chandrabhan Prasad. I don't have the data, but my own experience and that of my family validates what he is saying. I think it's not just about the civil services. I think it's about white collar jobs. I think the, the uh, Patels would not be agitating if they had access into TCS and um, Accenture and Wipro. They're not demanding a share of power through the uh, bureaucracy, if I'm able to understand their uh, demand right. They just want mobility. There are lots of small, perhaps unlanded farmers who don't have much uh, support by way of um, agriculture anymore and they don't have access to white collar jobs. So they're stuck and uh, in that state uh, unless they were to move. I think that is fundamentally the problem. Yeah, they're stuck in that state. Mr. Vyas, then what then are you, you know, is, is the BJP government going to do? Are you just going to clamp down on this massive protest? It was a million strong that actually gathered in Ahmedabad on the first rally of Hardik Patel. How does the government intend to deal with this, uh, with this massive protest that is there at your doorstep? Well, I, I think to a great extent, I would agree with uh, Mr. Akar Patel. I think today and in the coming 10 years, India is going to have a major problem because of the fragmentation of land. The land parcels are no, becoming smaller India. and no, smaller. No, not about India. Let's come to Gujarat. How does the Gujarat government Gujarat intend to deal with exception. this massive Gujarat mobilization is, of youth? Gujarat is part of India. You, you cannot take Gujarat uh, uh, from isolation and uh, just say put this uh, focus on Gujarat and discuss Gujarat only. Gujarat is part of uh, India and you cannot... No, but as Akar is saying, these demonstrations are not happening in any other city. Well, see, I think it is again something which you know, you, it is Gujarat, if you look at the history of Gujarat, right from Quit India movement to Jai Prakash to Navnirman to the Gujarat, Gujarat is a fertile ground for any these kind of movement to start, which is, which is tomorrow's India. This is going to happen. This is so a fertile you, ground for any kind are, of movement to start. Do you are, see this spilling over? Do you see this see, spilling over to let, other let, agrarian let, castes let, 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 in let North India? To let, the Jats, the Jat reservation has been struck down by the Supreme Court. Do you see this spilling over to the Kurmis, to the other dominant agrarian castes in North India? You know, uh, these are the castes. Patels, Jats, Kurmis, Gujars, Marathas. In 1901 census, all these castes, in particular Patels, argued with British that register us as Rajputs. Mm -hmm. You know, 100 years back, they were fighting for the Rajput status, claiming that we are Rajputs. Today they are saying we are backward. Crisis of English language education, it's a crisis of education. But let's now come to the politics, because the politics is also extremely important. Mr. Jenner and Vyas, there are reports that Hardik Patel's proximity to VHP leaders like Praveen Togadia is indicative of the fact that these forces who have been marginalized by the Modi regime in Gujarat during his 12 years are now using Hardik Patel to strike back at Mr. Modi. How do you react to that? Well, I think this is, this is these are all assumptions. Nobody knows who said to Narendra Modi. Nobody says which is senior leader. Nobody has made any comments. Nobody has uh, got any concluded and absolute evidence about what all gas is being hazarded. So I think let's wait for time. The picture will unfold sooner than the later. Okay. So You're saying I that think nobody knows, but... To, but... I, I think it's too early to point fingers to any particular... Uh, uh, group or particular uh, reason for that. Is this a movement to remove Anandi Ben Patel, who is the chief minister? Is this movement pro or anti BJP? Does this movement have any links with the upcoming Bihar elections that are going to take place later this year? Does this movement have anything to do with the local body elections that are going to come up in Ahmedabad where the BJP is supposed to be on the back foot? All those questions after the break. Welcome back to Capital View. Yes, the Patel agitation for reservations has taken place in Gujarat. We're asking what impact will it have in the rest of India? Is there a political dimension to this particular agitation? Akar Patel, respond to what Jainaran Vyas was saying in the earlier segment that it's far too early to speculate on any kind of political motive. But do you believe that this is the anti-Narendra Modi camp which is showing itself in Gujarat? There is no anti-Narendra Modi camp in the BJP in uh, Gujarat. There used to be till about 10 years ago, but he came and destroyed it. So from Keshubai, uh, Kashiram Bai, Gordhan Bai, Jadafia, 
Um, I, I came into voting in 1989 and I have never ever been in a, a polling booth in a Gujarat where the BJP has not won. And I think that he removed that entire lot, that whole generation that built the party. So are they striking state, back now in the Kashiram form of Pradeep Rana. Togadia? Uh, well, it's not. I think if, if there is a leader of the Patels in Gujarat, it is Mr. Modi. Just as uh, Mr. Yadav is the leader of the Muslims in UP, I think it is indisputably true that the leader of the Patels in uh, Gujarat is uh, Mr. Modi. But let me also come to the question of quotas. You know, at the end of the day, quotas have to an extent been hijacked by the creamy layer. Whether it's in the Dalits, whether it's in the OBCs, the creamy layer has hijacked, has monopolized the benefits. So can quotas... Again, if the Patels are wanting quotas, can they actually deliver to the Patels what the Patels want? Because at the end of the day, it's always that creamy layer that monopolizes it, monopolizes yeah. the benefits. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the mandates of reservation is to create a creamy layer in, in, in these groups who can com communicate with the rest of the society. What you call creamy layer in OBC mm -hmm. is actually a cow dung. It's right. not a, a cre cream at all. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the kind of dress OBC leaders uh, wear, look the kind of language they speak in parliament, uh, look the kind of ideas they have about society and about uh, uh, khap panchayat and all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is, it is extremely necessary to create creamy layers from Patels, from Yadavas, from Jat. You know, Mr. Hardik Patel is also talking about demolishing the entire reservation structure. He's like, either give us reservation or demolish the entire reservation structure. Now, is it time for the political class in India to realize that perhaps affirmative action and reservation has to be on economic criteria or on economic groups? Because if you give it to castes, then other castes will only demand it. I, I think I think it is it is it is not the issue. It is the issue ultimately going to be that what kind of lessons, what kind of takeaway from this agitation uh, one can have, and how best and how far because the country has to go on, and the country shall go on. So how best and how far you can improve the prison system to make it such that these kind of turbulences are avoided. So I think the takeaway from these kind of agitations will have to be taken into consideration. But Mr. Vyas, the manner in which your government has clamped down on this uh, uh, agitation, the use of maximum force, calling out the army, blackout of internet, uh, the way the police has stormed into particular residential areas, uh, you know, is this agitation, as I come back to it, a very fundamental threat to your government and have you succeeded in making Hardik Patel a heroic figure? Is he today a hero and a martyr? Well, I am I'm stunned. You know, this is like a double-edged sword. If government would have continued to uh, be a mute spectator, the same Sagarika Ghosh would have criticized the government for being a mute spectator, useless government, government putting the lives and limbs of the uh, uh, innocent citizens to the uh, state, uh, government not acting in time. Now, where the government has acted, you have another set of arguments. What kind of arguments we are getting into? No, because on the one hand, you are saying that he is not a threat to the government, but the way your government is uh, clamping down on no, him, it seems see, as if he is a threat. Government, any government and government's first job is to deliver governance. Any government cannot be a mute spectator, spectator to this kind of a scenario where you have the large number of citizens and large number of innocent people they, they are at, okay. uh, at, uh, their lives are at stake. But, uh, but it's, still, it's still then unclear as to how your government is going to deal with it. Let's come then to the caste question again with Akar Patel. Akar again talking about caste-based quotas and affirmative action on the basis of economics. Is this really the time to perhaps seriously look at the entire edifice of caste-based reservations in India. Reservations are a response to discrimination in a society. So long as we have discrimination in South Asia, in our country especially, we must have reservations on the basis of caste. We should reverse the discrimination upon uh, on those of whom we have uh, discriminated for eons. And I don't mm -hmm. think that till that ends or looks at or shows signs of ending, we should stop that. But the Patels have not been discriminated against before eons. They, I mean, should the not, they should not be given a quota. They should not be given a quota. The Patel agitation should not no. be listened to and they should not be given OBC quota. Do you agree with that, that there's no way Patel should be given OBC quota? No, not at all. There is not no all. reason Patel's Jats and the Marathas and Kurmis should be given. Reservation. No, who on this earth can prevent a Jat or a Patidar from mm. going to school? 
Right. Dalits have been prevented from entering school. Schools have been burned down in very Gujarat. Mm -hmm. Where is somebody preventing a Patel from entering a school, English medium school? So the only only instrument to discipline and mo make modern these communities to impose English on every Patel household. Impose English and don't give quota. Mr. Vyas, how do you uh, respond to that? I think, that I there's think no way friend, this quota I should think, be given. I think I would I would invite my friend to visit Gujarat. I think he is talking about 18th century Gujarat. He has not I, got any idea about the kind of education uh, facilities I, 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 they are I, I, available. I was there in Gujarat the kind last of month. institutions. Uh, I, you know, and, and you, you, you should know them. You should know them. In, in you should, in you should, no, no, people talk now, in Gujarati when, alone. Please, please right. don't. People please don't stop me. Please and don't interrupt. Please English. don't. Please don't interrupt me when you are making your arguments okay. which did not make any sense sorry, to me. Sorry. I am Go ahead, Mr. Vyas. Sorry. You should know that some of the finest educational institutes belong to the Patidars and Patels. And it, it, is, it is also a community which is today in the forefront as far as United States economic no, uh, Mr. Vyas, uh, community is please, concerned. Uh, please so respond, to, the, they don't know please respond to what the and, panelists and are saying, that there is no way the Patel should they get They may not quotas. be preferring government job. There are, there are reasons for that and that will need a separate debate. But to say that but they are backward because they don't learn English is, 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 a, is a big joke. On one hand, you're saying that the Gujaratis, the, the Patels are doing so well. On the other hand, you're saying that they also need quotas. Now, I want to ask you, can any politician today, can any politician today say that they're opposed to caste-based quotas? You know, Mr. Modi attacks uh, Nitish Kumar and Lalu Yadav in Bihar for playing caste-based politics. Can Mr. Modi actually come out and openly say that he's against reservation? See, number one, I have not, I am not here to sit over the judgment. What Neither is Mr. Modi's stand on caste quotas? What is Mr. Modi's stand on caste quotas? How can I talk on behalf of Mr. Modi? I am not authorized to do that. Akhar, do you feel that um, Modi should make his views on quotas, reservations, which way he thinks? Should this be made clear? It's a very difficult a position that he's in. I think no uh, Prime Minister, um, had it been Mr. Singh or Mr. Modi or uh, whoever else, can respond to this in a way that will satisfy all concern. I think the Patel demand is seen by many people to be unreasonable, which is true. The other problem is that most of Mr. Modi's support, or a very, very large part of it, comes from such people, urban people who believe that caste quota should go. So actually his base, if we were to call it that, his big urban base, is in support of what the Patel demand is. But the law, the constitution and morality dictates that it should not be uh, a surrendered to. Right. This so is, in fact, Mr. Modi... Sagrika, this is precisely what I am saying, that this agitation is going to throw some very important pointers. We must take the lessons out of it and plan or think about the future action or planning further. Right, but uh, the, the fa fact is that as Akar is saying, Mr. Modi stands for that aspirational youth vote, which is probably against reservation. On the other hand, his own position in Gujarat is such that he can't speak out openly against reservation. So the politician and the prime minister, they're caught in a bit of a bind. Let me end the program with asking you, this is the 125th uh, birth anniversary year of uh, Ambedkar. What do you think Ambedkar would have made of the Patel agitation for reservation? See, Ambedkar would have first said in response to this, this uh, agitation that the Patels have become a laughing stock, he would have told Dari that after third generation, quit uh, this quota basket and compete with, in society openly. And he, he would tell Dari that, uh, 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 that capture Infosys mm -hmm. and not the Tassidar positions. What Patels are saying, they, are not, they don't have any complaint with the IT industry. They don't so you think Ambedkar would have disapproved of the Patel agitation? Of course. Right. Immediately. We're going to have to leave it there. Massive protest by youth for OBC status in Gujarat. We're asking the question, what impact will this have in the rest of India? Panelists are saying there is no way that Patel should be given OBC status or quotas. Jenner and Vyas of the BJP saying this is a hunger for youth for jobs. That's the question. It's about jobs, jobs, jobs. The question is, is quota the way to give it or is economic criteria the way to give affirmative action? That's a debate that the politicians are going to have to, at some point or the other, have an answer. And Mr. Modi has to make it clear where he stands on caste quotas. Thanks so much for watching Capital View. We're back again next week.
Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.